Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is May 19th, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about what happened in this heavyweight unification match for the undisputed championship <clears throat> between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, boxing's blessed. You had a huge event. We haven't had an undisputed heavyweight champion for over two decades. And this event delivered. This is that rare event where there are no losers. If you had your doubts about Tyson Fury entering this fight, folks, the plane left the airport. Fury's ahead in the middle rounds. If you had bet on Fury, you thought to yourself, okay, good, all he has to do here is maintain what he's doing. Right? In the middle of this fight, Fury's up around four rounds. One to, you know, let's say two rounds for Usyk. Right? You thought Fury was looking spectacular. But then, of course, the roof caved in. Unfortunately for Fury, these fights are 12 rounds long. Somehow, Usyk predictably on his front foot right by the middle of the fight you understand he's trying to crash the pocket he's coming in just picture yourself looking forward imagine a clock he's coming in at 11 o'clock continually on Tyson Fury's left shoulder now we're in an era where the epicenter of the heavyweight division has been the United Kingdom. Right? For several years now, you've had a British Empire in the heavyweight division. Now, what if I told you that a guy would fight Anthony Joshua twice, would fight Daniel Dubois, would fight Tyson Fury, and the one guy who treated this smaller fighter like a guy coming up from cruiserweight was Derek Chisora. Right, folks, this was a great fight, but of course, we're all mortal. Understand mistakes were made. I'm not sure, and I thought before the fight, that the betting side of the play was Usyk, right? Made a few videos on that. But I'm not sure if this fight turns out the same way the second time around. Let me also say, too, I'm one of those people who is very happy, and I mean very happy, that they actually named someone the winner of this fight. Right? Because, quite frankly, understand since Usyk is being stripped of one of the belts right this is ball uh, this is boxing politics is king it may have been another two decades before we got one of these unification matches for the undisputed heavyweight champion right understand of the two fights these guys have signed up for this was the fight that was going to crown the undisputed heavyweight champion let me also say, too, that I applaud Tyson Fury for making the decision to rethink whether he wants an immediate rematch with Usyk. Right? Understand, there's some other lions out there in the forest. You've heard me mention the guy's name several times. It's Felik Ergovic. You also have a whole generation that's missing from the discussion in terms of heavyweight champion, 
right? Too many of the guys are in their 30s. Just add up the ages of the fighters. Right here, the young man was Tyson Fury, and he's 35. Wasn't there a time when 22-year-old Muhammad Ali became heavyweight champion? Wasn't there a time when an even younger Mike Tyson became heavyweight champion? Right? Think of the guys who are in their 20s right now. Big Baby, Jared Anderson, Ricardo Torres, right? Who won this weekend as well in a match against another unbeaten fighter? Right, folks, the youngsters are going to grow up. We might as well start paying attention to them before they end up in college. Right? So I'm grateful Tyson Fury has taken a step back. He's lost his unbeaten status. Right? He needs to think about whether he wants to challenge Philippe Ergovic. Understand, the heavyweight title is again fractured. Right? This was one of those, you're undisputed for five minutes. Now we're going to give one of your belts to someone else. <laughs> but... You end up in the books with Lennox Lewis, right? So let's talk about, let's talk about this fight. Let's talk about the mistakes people made. Let's talk about what people did well. Let's talk about how the outcome could have been different, right? Let me just say Tyson Fury's strategy early on was brilliant. If you want to see Tyson Fury at his best, look at this fight early. He comes out and he's jabbing the Usyk's body while dancing, while using reach. He's doing things only a 6'9 guy with legs, a mobile jab, and coordination can do. <clears throat> He's using his reach to the point where he's able to hit Usyk in the body, and he does so repeatedly. He's able to hit Usyk in the body, and Usyk, who's planning a counter, throws the counter and misses completely. Right? I'm telling you, there were moments in this fight where you looked at the fighters and you thought, okay, the shorter guy's the better athlete. But the more skilled fighter is the taller guy. I thought Fury early in this fight showed you that he's more skilled. He can do more things. Life's unfair. He's 6'9 with reach and coordination. He can do more things. He's more special <clears throat> than Alexander Usyk. But let's also point out the problems. Fury comes in and he's a bit dirty, isn't he? He's cheating, isn't he? It's cheating at a high level, but it's cheating, isn't it? He's using his jab hand as a pathfinder, just like he did in the second Deontay Wilder fight. <clears throat> he's sticking it out. He understands he has a reach advantage on the shorter man. He's making sure the shorter man stays outside. Now this is something he has to have worked on extensively with Sugar Hill Stewart. Right? Yeah, I'm calling out even the trainer. Right? So here is Tyson Fury. He's throwing jabs to the shorter man's body. And then he stops throwing jabs and he just sticks his hand out. That's where we are in this fight. Let's also call out the powers that be in boxing. <clears throat> One guy is 6'9". The other guy is bigger than Sonny Liston. Right? Don't you need a young, vibrant referee in the ring with these guys? Don't you need a guy who understands, just given what happened in the Daniel Dubois fight, that parts of this fight are going to be rough and tumble. They're going to feature body shots. Right? The stakes are as high as they could be. 
undisputed at heavyweight. Right? What are we doing? I'm not saying the ref did a bad job, <clears throat> but what are we doing with this older referee who's dwarfed by the fighters? <laughs> I thought, how's this guy going to push these guys apart? You know, uh, let's just say we've all seen countless fights with good young referees, and you thought, okay, this is an opportunity for boxing to get some highly skilled young guy in there who isn't going to take a lot from these fighters, whatever the status of these fighters. Right, Fury, champion for years. Usyk has his own share of the belts. Usyk, Olympic gold medalist. You know, you needed a referee who wasn't going to care. Who was going to treat this like a fight between two combatants. Who was going to issue warnings. Who was going to say, hey, hey, stop for a moment. Tyson, you can't just stick out your hand. If you're throwing a punch, you need to throw a punch. But you can't use your hand as a pathfinder. Folks, we didn't get that. We did not get that. So the fight starts. Tyson Fury looks good. Tyson Fury is landing shots to Usyk's body. Now, Usyk, going into the fight, came across as multifaceted, didn't he? But in the fight, it's amazing, isn't it? He starts to rely extensively on his front foot. By the way, this is a front foot we did not see for several rounds against Derek Chisora. Right? Chisora treated Usyk as if he was a cruiserweight visitor to the division. Right? Usyk's too busy with his backup against the ropes, against Derek Chisora. Right? Chisora must be looking around at his fellow countrymen and must be wondering, wow, are these guys even watching my fights? Didn't I show you the way to back up Usyk? Here, Usyk's in against a 6 die guy. And he's on his front foot, and he's trying to throw his Sunday punch, which is his somewhat straight, right? It's not a pure straight left hand. It's a somewhat straight left hand. It has a little bit of a curve on it. But understand, after being hit in the body, after being outboxed up close early, Usyk decides he's going to hurt Tyson Fury. I don't believe Usyk's in this fight for a decision. Now this is boxing. It has a history. There's a fight that tracks this one somewhat. Like this fight is one of the biggest fights in boxing history. Let me point out this fight. Fury Usyk's a better fight than the fight I'm about to discuss. But it's the same dynamic. Taller man. Muhammad Ali against a shorter man. Joe Fraser. And Fraser comes in and just like Usyk decides, you know what, I'm going to land some left hands. I want a stoppage. I'm not intimidated by the other guy's height. I don't think the other guy can scrap with me. Well, understand, folks, that's Usyk, the fighter we know about coming into this fight. The guy with lateral movement and, <clears throat> you know, uh, an ability to move away from Arthur Perturbiev in the amateurs, right? The guy who beats a more prime Maris Breedis, by the way, masterful fight by Jay Obataya. We'll talk about that in a different video. Right? I was wrong on that fight. Fortunately, the overhit for the hedge. But understand here, this becomes an exercise, doesn't it? Just like Ali Fraser won. In the shorter man hunting down the bigger man. Even when Tyson Fury's having success, he's on his back foot, isn't he? Right? It's, it's a bit shocking. I didn't quite understand it. Let me just say too, Usyk increasingly becomes one-handed, doesn't he? 
we know he has a high right hand. I don't mean to diminish it. He has a high right hand. Right? But folks, he's loading up and he's throwing somewhat straight lefts. Right? Isn't he head hunting? 6 9 Tyson Fury. Right, folks, it's it's shocking. So then we get to the middle of the fight. And here's where things get interesting. Now, let me admit, hindsight's a hundred percent. Right? I'm nitpicking after the fight. But let me just ask the question. Wasn't there a time in this fight where you thought that Tyson Fury was getting hit with too many Usyk somewhat straight left hands? Weren't you a bit bewildered that Tyson Fury did not seem able to do anything to prevent Usyk from coming in at 11 o'clock? In other words, imagine the two guys are straight then have Usyk a little bit off to Tyson Fury's left. He's coming in continually at the same angle. He's not trying to hide it. He's throwing this somewhat straight left hand. And he's doing this round after round against a bigger man. So then Tyson Fury stumbles into something. And it's surprising. Right? Tyson Fury starts having success with the most dangerous punch he can throw. It's his right hand to the body. Right? It's a bit of a shocker. He even turns it at times and it's landing right uppercuts on Usyk. Now understand how perilous this is. In the pre-fight video, I was saying, hey, don't do it. Crowd Usyk's right hand. Be on Usyk's right side. As Usyk tries to make the adjustment, throw left hooks. Because the problem with throwing your right hand to the body, and understand, Ali hardly ever threw punches to the body. Vladimir Klitschko, who was at the fight, hardly ever threw punches to the body. If you want to know what undid Razor Ruddick when he fought Lennox Lewis, it was when Ruddick goes to Lewis's body and Lewis counters it up top. You're fighting a southpaw. When you throw shots with your right hand to the body, aren't you open up top in a fight where you're already getting hit? with too many left hands. Aren't you giving Usyk an opportunity to counter the right hand? Not if you're Tyson Fury. I applaud Team Fury for this. Fury figures out a way to be on the outside, to pick the timing, and then to jump in the pocket to throw right hands to Usyk's body that Usyk's unprepared to counter. Right, folks? It's a hold-your-breath moment in this fight. Fury discovers the right hand to the body. He's landing it with some regularity. You look down on your scorecard and you thought Fury's winning this fight and now he's found a decisive punch. You thought this fight was over. But understand, Fury makes mistakes, right? What's Fury doing up on the ropes? Right? Against an opponent who you know can be mobile. Right? Fury, of course, never figures out. I mean, never figures out what to do with Usyk's right hand. I saw Fury at times sticking his right hand out. But Usyk was able to get around the right hand. He'd throw that left over the right hand. Right? Fury has a hard time blocking Usyk's straight left. I should say somewhat straight left. Then we get to the ninth round. 
Folks, this is one of the biggest rounds in heavyweight history. Usyk comes in and of course he lands a left hand, right? Of course, when I say Usyk comes in, you're thinking to yourself, well, Rich, tell us the round because Usyk's coming inside on Big Tyson Fury every round, right? I'd love to hear an interview of a big man, some bully type guy, right? George Foreman comes to mind, right? You know, I like to mention George Foreman. He really was singular. Um, if you're landing the types of right hands to the body that Tyson Fury is able to land in the 7th and 8th round, you thought, if you're the bigger man, wouldn't you then reach forward at that point? Because you're hitting Usyk and Usyk looks hurt. Wouldn't you come forward and you're, you're cheating already using your left as a pathfinder. Wouldn't you come forward and push the guy? I want people to revisit Foreman Fraser, right? Both fights, they did fight a second time, but the first fight where Foreman takes the title, right? Foreman's a bigger man. He's fighting a smaller man. He literally is pushing Joe Fraser. Doesn't want Fraser to get inside like Usyk's getting inside here. Wants to discourage Fraser from always being front foot, like Usyk is front foot here. And so Foreman's pushing the shorter guy, right? We understand Usyk's hard to clinch. But understand, you're the bigger man. Shouldn't you at least be pushing him around? Right? Fury has the lead. Why is Fury always on his back foot? Then when Fury lands big shots, body shots, one point and uppercut, right, with the right hand, as Fury is landing these body shots, why couldn't he use size at that point? Come forward, try to clinch Usyk. If Usyk doesn't, you know, allow the clinch, wouldn't he push him, right? Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, another bigger man, smaller man fight. Lewis clearly watched the George Foreman fight because Lewis in that fight is pushing Tyson with both hands, right? When were you shown moments in this fight where Fury uses his height, where Fury follows up landed shots by pushing Alexander Usyk? I would argue that that's the mistake that Fury makes here. He doesn't use his size enough. So the ninth round comes. Where is Usyk? Usyk's in front of Fury, a little bit off at the side, right? That's the thing with Usyk. He's always a little bit off at the side. He's in front of Fury, and he's coming forward. The big left hand, where is Fury when it lands? Folks, he's over by the ropes. Why is he there? He's over by the ropes against an opponent who's relentlessly front foot. Now, there is a hand speed gap here. There is a coordination gap here. There's a stamina gap here. Right? If Usyk was a video game, his energy level at the start of the ninth round would be about the same as what it is at the start of the first round. When Usyk catches Fury up on the ropes, folks, Fury's so out of it, he can't even put his hands up. By this point, Fury's so out of practice in terms of clinching Usyk, right? Coming forward, even pushing Usyk away. He's so out of practice that he just gets battered. The battering is prolonged. The ropes aren't supposed to save you from falling. When you see a fighter get hit and then fall into the ropes, that should be a knockdown. Now we can interpret the events of the round however we want. I would argue that Fury is clearly out of it. 
when he hits the rope on the side. In other words, he falls into the rope. Now, boxing hangs on seconds, as we all know. I would argue that had the referee stepped in at that point, when Fury falls into the side rope, Fury would have had a better chance of recovering. Instead, Fury falls into the side rope. Usyk is predictably on his front foot, loading up what? Straight left hands. Right? Usyk follows him, bludgeons him some more. It's only when Tyson Fury falls into the corner after he's taken a few more shots while hurt that the referee steps in and starts to count, right? But make no mistake, folks, Fury so battered, he could have been ruled down for falling in the side rope before he clearly falls in the corner. Now, Fury's able to make somewhat of a comeback, but I would argue not enough of a comeback. I would also argue that that round is the iconic round of this fight. So when you see a fight like this, where Fury never has control of Usyk's straight left, I'll call it again a somewhat straight left, he never has control of Usyk's left hand, right, never. Um, even though he's the much bigger man, you see them, he looks like the much bigger man. You don't get the feeling he's able to push Usyk around like Foreman did Fraser and like Lennox Lewis did Mike Tyson, right? You don't feel the size. Even when Usyk's getting hit with shots, Fury doesn't use the opportunity to lean on him to try to drain his stamina. Right, folks, the ninth round is so lopsided on the telecast, one of the guys in the booth openly is talking about how they could have stopped the fight. I agree with him. Understand, Tyson Fury's getting hit with shots and he can't do anything other than get hit with shots and stagger over to the side of the ropes. It's bad footage. Now Fury does recover. Let's remember Fury comes back after getting knocked down twice, the second time real hard, by Deontay Wilder. Right? Fury's a guy who comes back. We'd be remembering this fight differently. We'd be salivating at the idea of a rematch. Many of us are anyway. Had they called the fight in the ninth round, Right? Had the ref come over and waved it off, there'd be a lot of people who would say, hey, that was premature. There'd be others who would say, hey, how many punches are we supposed to see Tyson Fury take in a match? Understand that Fury would have been ahead on the scorecards. But of course, knockouts count in boxing he would have been stopped. We would debate whether it was a lucky punch, even though by that stage, Usyk had landed several straight, somewhat straight left hands, right? Instead, the fight lingered, opening the door to controversy. Fury comes back. He's bluffing a little bit, but he does look good. He, he at least looks spirited in the 10th round, right? We'll give him that. But I would say the judges saw one guy who looked like a better athlete, who had the much faster hands. Fury does well when length is involved. Usyk does better when he gets in close. Let me also say, too, that I'm missing something here. Obviously, the view from outside of the ring is different than in the ring. Anthony Joshua has an excellent left hook. For some reason against Usyk, there's some dynamic where guys keep the left hook in the holster. I was looking at 
Tyson Fury. Now understand, Maris Breedis threw the left hook against Usyk. Had some success with it. I was looking at this fight and I was wondering why Fury wasn't over on Usyk's right side. Understand, while Usyk has a decent right hand, it's not close to his left hand. Right? Just like Joe Fraser had a great left hook, his right hand wasn't legendary. I would argue Usyk is really a somewhat straight left hand. Right? In an interview before this fight took place, Arthur Perturbiev actually talked about how he felt Usyk had problems with body shots. Right? Understand, those guys had some classic dust-ups in the amateurs. Right here in this Tyson Fury fight, you saw Usyk have problems with body shots. You saw it. But then the bigger man didn't follow up off the body shot to kind of like toss him or even to change the angles. In other words, if I know Usyk's right here trying to throw a left hand down Main Street, if I hurt him to the body, isn't that the time for me to change the angles? Isn't that the time for me to jump over to his right side where the punch coming back isn't that lethal? And then to throw my own offense as he has to move to find me. Right? Lennox Lewis, before this fight, Lennox Lewis talked about how when he fought Evander Holyfield, Holyfield kept him turning. Right? Why isn't Tyson Fury after landing body shots? Either pushing Usyk around, right? Trying to, you know, show that he's the big man. Or forcing Usyk to reset. Why does the fight hinge so much on Usyk coming forward, right? He's relentlessly front foot and throwing that somewhat straight left hand, right? So I applaud the guys. Um, let's just say I have no problem with the decision. Understand how close we came to controversy. If you take away the knockdown in the ninth round, and it's a knockdown, I'm not saying it should be taken away. But understand the scoring is so close that if that ninth round was 10-9 and not 10-8, this fight would have been a draw. Right? Think about it. The deciding card is a one-point differential. Right? This fight would have been a draw. Lennox Lewis would have continued his reign as the last undisputed heavyweight champion, <laughs> right? The rematch wouldn't involve all the belts. People would have been upset, right? Because you would have had a fight where one guy gets a knockdown. And of course, the other guy has no answers for his offense. And of course, the Usyk people would have said, hey, our guy got robbed. Right, so all I can say is I accept the decision here. I did think Usyk has the airport, put it this way, has the plane leave the airport, was in control of this fight as late as round seven. Right, seemed to be in control. And then things fell apart. Then we saw the stamina gap that the guys had just look at the hand speed on the films and stuff. Usyk's a master at fainting and, uh, you know, keeping guys off balance. But you notice, if these two guys both decided to throw punches at the same time, Usyk's punch would get there first. He's throwing the shorter punch, right? He has more energy He's the better athlete, and it showed, right? As I said in the pre-fight, Fury does better against guys who are tall, big, clunky, because he has the athletic advantage in those fights. 
his Waterloo are smaller, more coordinated fighters, right? It's the Steve Cunninghams of the world. It's the Usyk's of the world. Here, you see him against a superior athlete, right? Usyk has a bigger problem. I believe Usyk would have a big problem with J.O. Pattaya. Right? I believe Usyk would have a problem, believe it or not, with Gilberto Ramirez, who's an accomplished body puncher. He's one of the top guys now at Cruiserweight along with Obataya. I believe those guys pose a bigger problem for him than, let's say, an Anthony Joshua. So understand, you had both guys. In the ring, Usyk had his dream opponent, Fury would have preferred to fight a big guy. Where does this leave the heavyweight division? Folks, let me disagree with Lennox Lewis. Lewis claims that the heavyweight division was better in the 90s. Uh, I have personally, my own opinion, never seen the heavyweight division as deep as it is. Right, folks, this is a deep division. Right? You've heard me call a guy the heir apparent, and it's not one of these two guys. It's Philippe Ergovic. Right? I think Ergovic, let's just say, if Fury doesn't fight, and this was a classic fight, if Fury doesn't fight Usyk in a rematch, right? I would not be surprised if Usyk pivots to fight the winner of Ergovic against Dubois. Right? Let's face it, he has history with Dubois. Many of you feel the way I do, that Dubois' body shot was a legitimate punch. Right? If Ergovic beats Dubois, and keep in mind, Ergovic has already beaten Gili Zhang. Right? If Ergovic beats Dubois, I think Ergovic, Usyk, get your popcorn ready. Right? Let me just say, too, I believe fighters see films differently than lay people like us. I'm looking at this film and I see a blueprint on how to face Usyk, right? Usyk is heavily reliant, I mean heavily reliant, on that straight left, right? Usyk did get hit to the body. Ergovic throws punches on a loop. Let me also point out too, the fact that Usyk is a southpaw is a nice novelty until you realize that Luis Ortiz, and I know he's in his 40s. Folks, he's a tough matchup, right? I'll agree his chin isn't quite what it was. We all saw the Charles Martin fight, right? Andy Ruiz, we saw that fight, right? But I believe, you know, <sighs> Luis Ortiz would know how to deal with that straight left, right? I'll agree southpaws are more accustomed to fighting righties. But let's just say because Luis Ortiz himself throws the same punch, has much of the same fight pattern as Usyk, I think that's a great fight, right? Understand, too, that Andy Ruiz fight against Luis Ortiz, it's Ortiz who finished strong. If you're concerned about Ortiz's stamina, I would encourage people to look at that Andy Ruiz fight. Let me also say, too, the last king of Scotland, Martin Bacoli, throws punches on a hook, right? I get the feeling that that fight's a different fight if Bacoli knows he can land to the body. The punches come in at such weird angles that a Carlos Takam couldn't figure them out when he was fighting Bacoli. Let me add to, you have a good buddy of Tyson Fury's, right? The UK is such a mecca for fighters these days that a Joe Parker, former champion, comes from New Zealand and is hanging out with Andy Lee and them in the UK. Right now, let's just talk about who's most deserving for a shot on Usyk. If I'm Usyk, I'm looking at the field. Usyk claims he wants to fight till he's 40. Um, I get the feeling that's not quite right, but we'll, we'll play along with the public narrative. 
right? Understand, Joe Parker has just beaten two of the biggest punchers in the heavyweight division. Deontay Wilder and Gili Zhang. Right, so if Joe Parker said, hey, player, fight me. I mean, you know, what is the key we have to do to get a title shot here? Understand, that's a huge fight. Right, both guys have given great performances in Saudi Arabia. I'm positive they would welcome that fight. And understand, there you wouldn't have the coordination gap because Parker is one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division. Right? Understand, too, Usyk has another path he could take. He's already been undisputed at cruiser and at heavy. Since being undisputed is hard to do, Canelo knows this, right? Your phone rings, it's another sanctioning body telling you about yet another mandatory who they want you to fight, right? You're fighting unbeaten guys and people are hopping out the weeds saying, when are you going to fight David Benavides? You know, there's always that person who, you know, the crowd's going to say, hey, you're, you're dodging our guy. That's as you're fighting unbeaten guys with 40-odd wins, right? So if I'm Usyk, if I am on my way to retirement, but I just want to make some money on the way out, and I don't care too much more about the titles because I've been there, I've done that. Right? Someone showing up saying, hey, you know, what about this title offense? I can say, hey, player, I was undisputed at Cruiser. I was undisputed at Heavy. Check the resume. Wins over Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Right? If he wants to completely terrorize a country, and he's terrorizing the UK right now, let's be clear. Derek Chisora, Daniel Dubois, AJ, now Tyson Fury, he could pivot to unbeaten Fabio Wardley. He could pivot to Joe Joyce, who's only lost to one guy. Right? Understand, those fights would fill Wembley, wouldn't they? Right? He could, you know, just keep the storyline going because the UK is one of those countries with a vibrant boxing culture. The fans come out. Right? So, let's just say I believe the heavyweight division is in good hands. Right? If I'm Tyson Fury at 35, I take a breather. Right? You heard me in the pre-fight videos say that I doubted these two guys fight each other back to back. Right? If I'm Tyson Fury, I might let Usyk take care of the division's Philippe Ergovic problem if he can Right? If he can't, well, who's more deserving of fighting the winner of Usyk Ergovic than the man who just lost a split decision by one point on the third scorecard? Great fight. Um, somebody needs to tap Fury on the shoulder and tell him, hey, player, you're 6'9". When you start great, when the planes left the airport, you start landing rights to the body, remind the guy that you're the bigger man. Right? Push him. If you could do more than push him, lean on him. Hug him. Right? Remind him, hey man, I weigh more than 250. Right? Re remind him in this fight, I'm the big man on campus. Aren't you losing this fight already? You stay on your back foot against a relentless fighter who has, let's face it, and it's hidden, an A-level, somewhat straight right hand, right? You foolishly lounge out by the ropes. Hey, man, if you're in the lead, what do you think this guy's quickest way back in the fight is? Isn't it to knock you down? What are you doing over by the ropes? He may have had to be because Usyk was forcing him to fight every minute of every round. Even though Usyk's older, right, and that's supposed to be a secret, even though Usyk's older than him, let's face it, Usyk was the better athlete in the ring. It showed. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.